This video will talk about count data and count distributions. We'll talk about what count data are. We'll talk about how count regression models can be used to understand generalized linear models. And we'll talk about how we might deal with data if they have lots of zeros. So what are count data? Well, count data are widely used in the agriculture and natural resource disciplines. What they are, are any observations that can take only non-negative integer values, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, and etc. And these values we get from counting, not ranking. And so example distributions that follow count distributions are the Poisson, binomial, and negative binomial. What about an example of that? Well, my favorite baseball team, the New York Mets, uh, didn't have a great baseball season in 2020. A good example of uh, baseball statistics that follow count distributions are the number of runs scored by a team and the number of runs allowed by a team. And so you can see the number of runs scored by the Mets in 2020 is shown here with the number of games that they scored each number of runs on the y-axis. And so you can see generally it looks like the most number of runs they scored happened uh, when it was 5 or 3. So, uh, in contrast, the number of runs allowed by the Mets are shown here. It looks like the most they allowed was 4, but you can see a kind of a shifted distribution. Now, what you might know is that the New York Mets had a losing season in 2020, and you can see that this distribution is kind of shifted off to the right the number of runs allowed versus the number of runs scored, that would indicate that, well, the Mets allowed more runs than they scored, which generally indicates a losing baseball team. And so a good example of count data are runs scored and allowed in a baseball game. What about some other uh, examples of count data? Well, this could be things like uh, uh, the number of car crashes, at an intersection. Uh, this is a good example of one that's rare and independent. That's often a characteristic of Poisson data. A Poisson distribution is a discrete random variable that's often characterized by something that's happening rare and independently. And so you could think, well, if car crashes are happening, uh, while well, they're not going to be occurring every hour of every day, and each car crash we might think is independent of the last car crash. Well, we might think about something like counts by a bird, by a birder. We might think about the number of butterflies of a specific species on a prairie. Lots of examples of count data in the natural resources and ag fields. So the Poisson regression then is a useful modeling framework. It assumes that the response variable y is a Poisson distribution and assumes the logarithm of its expected value can be modeled by a linear combination of parameters. So if yi is distributed as a Poisson, we denote that with lambda. Lambda is the common Greek letter used to denote the parameter associated with the Poisson distribution. It's useful for modeling rare and independent events. What I like about the Poisson distribution is the expected value, or the mean, is lambda, and the variance is lambda. And so the mean is equal to the variance in this case. And so that's often the case, especially when we deal with um, lots of data that are uh, noisy. And so the variance function then is just mu sub i, and the link function is the log of mu sub i. So how does this compare to the normal distribution? So here we have a normal distribution with a mean of 2 and a variance of 2. And you can see the mean, the, the center of the bell-shaped curve is around 2, and it's distributed plus or minus 2, uh, which is the variance. So here's our normal bell-shaped curve. Well, here's the same distribution, but a Poisson distribution with the same parameters. And so here we have a mean of 2, and the variance of 2, but this is the Poisson. You can see that the mean of 2, well, the average is between 1 and 2 here uh, in terms of how it, how it shows in this distribution. 
The key thing about the Poisson distribution is it's a discrete distribution. And so it's not continuous. We don't get one smooth line, but instead we get different values for each integer. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So it goes to show you that with the same parameters, but just a different underlying distribution, you can have uh, what look like, and which are, quite different distributions. Another important one to think about when it comes to count data, another distribution that's important is the negative binomial. So the negative binomial is a distribution and an example of a count model that includes an over dispersion parameter. And so in this case, you can think about the negative binomial having one additional parameter that takes into account some of the variance that you're seeing in your data. And it does that by using the, the over dispersion parameter. A lot of people like the negative binomial because it's a little bit more flexible than Poisson models in many applications. And so we'll see an example of that when we work through some of the data. We'll work through one example uh, looking at fishing. And so what we have here is a, a data set of a bunch of campers that went out and caught fish. And then uh, after they caught those fish, and they were in a state park doing this, we asked them how many fish they caught. Uh, and so what you see here is the number of fish caught on the x-axis and the number of times we observed different numbers of fish being caught. So you can see there are a lot of fish being caught where zero fish were caught, but there are many others where multiple uh, fish were caught, including one group that caught over 150 fish in their outing. And so we might be interested in saying, okay, what's what's going on here? Are there specific attributes about each group that went out going fishing that we might be able to say something about um, the number of fish they caught? And so our predictive variables here are the number of children in the group. So you might think, well, if you have more children in the group, maybe that's more people um, that might be fishing. The other thing is, well, did you camp one or more nights during your stay? Well, the idea there being, well, if you camped more than one night, well, maybe that meant you went, you went fishing for a longer time. And so that could be a good predictor, maybe, of the number of fish you caught. And then the last predictor is just the number of people in the group. Again, maybe if you have lots of people in your group, maybe more of them are fishing, you'll catch more fish. And so we'll look at this data a little bit later, but I wanted to show you what it looks like looking at these different distributions, that is the Poisson and the negative binomial. What you can see in the Poisson probability uh, is this graph here in the squares. And you can see that it thinks that most of the fish were being caught uh, were around two. So it thinks that on average each group caught two fish. So that's interesting. Now notice what you'll see between the actual observed proportion and the negative binomial, you'll see that they both follow closely against one another. And so both of them kind of have this decreasing trend here. And so the, in here, the mean value for the observed and from the negative binomial model is zero. So on average, it would predict zero uh, fish being caught. And so then you can see it kind of decreasing downward. And what that does is it looks awful similar to the previous slide where we looked at that histogram showing the number of fish caught and the number of times each of the number of fish occurred. And so in this case, we might think about uh, using something like the negative binomial model as opposed to the Poisson model because it more closely matches the observed proportion that we looked at. And so these are two examples, the Poisson and the negative binomial, that work well for modeling count data.